Friends, I want to read a passage of scripture in the reverse order that is listed in the Bible. It's a very famous part. It's the three, of, three, three angels' message found in Revelation 14, uh, 6 through 12. And I'd like to start with uh, the third angel's message, which is verses 9 through 11. Third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast, this is the papacy, and the image, this is the forced worship of church and state combination. If any man worship the beast and his image, and receives his mark, that's the spiritual mark, uh, when you follow traditions of men that deviate from the word of God, showing your allegiance is not to Jesus and his word, if any man receives his mark in his forehead, that's the belief system, if you're following the system, or in his hand, usually the right hand, representing works. So if you are um, supporting these systems with your faith or with your actions, you are guilty of this worship. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, of course, is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day or night, who worship the beast in his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Friends, this is the destruction of everyone who will follow the papacy and all of its ecumenical systems. Persecution is coming to the United States. The United States government is going to accept a state religion influenced from Rome, influenced through the Pope, and then we're going to um, force some laws worshiping in a certain way which is going to be different than the Ten Commandments. So this will be against God. This will be the system of false worship. This is Babylon. The Babylonian system of false worship will now be integrated into the United States, which is going to set the, set the stage for the whole world. We can read about this going back to verse 8. There followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Again, the large system of false religion, confusion. This fallen has fallen off the gospel path. It is not heading toward heaven. The Roman Catholic Church is not leading people to heaven. Because she made all nations, this thing goes global, she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The wine is false doctrine, substituting the true gospel of Jesus Christ with righteousness by works or righteousness by faith and works uh, all of these false doctrines uh, going through the priests when Jesus is the only mediator um, to different types of uh, non-biblical things uh, the fourth commandment says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy six days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God in it you shall not work you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your cattle or your stranger who is within your gates for in six days the Lord made the heaven or the earth the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it this is the Sabbath the true Sabbath according to the God of creation who created all things in six days and rested the seventh this is Saturday starting at Friday sunset through Saturday sunset <clears throat> this is God's true Sabbath but the papacy have accepted the teachings of paganism which changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday so now this image of the beast will be teaching Sunday as the Lord's Day so if you accept this this is the commandment of man and not the commandment of God this is like Cain doing his own worship and not Abel who followed and accepted God's sacrifice so God wants us to worship in spirit and truth uh, John chapter 4 verse 23 that's what Jesus said and the truth is according to the eternal law of uh, the Ten Commandments. The first four commandments show us how to worship God. So this is Babylon's call 
to worship, and it's going to be integrated using the state power, the civil power, to support its religious beliefs. And that's a no-no. Jesus said, um, he, he said his kingdom is not of this world, and he was very clear when he divided and separated religion from politics. He didn't uh, get involved in politics. Now, most importantly, is verse 6 and 7. This is the true worship, the call to true worship today. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach to them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. This is the call today for true worship. We are living in the judgment hour. What this means is that the final judgment is going on now for souls. Jesus is in heaven reviewing the accounts of those claiming to be Christian, as well as around the world. And the destinies of the eternal destinies of souls are being decided. Friends, we are living in the last moments of Earth's history. Jesus comes at midnight. It is now 11.59 and seconds on the time clock. The judgment hour is upon us. The door of probation is about to close. So these are our final chances to uh, surrender to the Lord. All we have to do is confess. We are all sinners. Everyone has sinned. Read the Ten Commandments if you're not sure uh, if you qualify and see how well you do. If you've ever sinned, uh, stolen, coveted, not just in action, but if you continue to do these things in your thoughts, that's um, spiritually violating the law. Have you lusted men, women, after other people? Um, people you're not married to? Gone after idols, spiritual idols, American idols, that type of stuff? We're all guilty, but if we confess and repent and forgive these sins, Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the deal of the century, the deal of the universe. We can't, shouldn't pass this up. We shall be saved through this if we adhere to him and go on into eternity in heaven paradise restored no more tears no more pain no more suffering no more sorrow all of this will be wiped away all of the bad news and the wars no more mansions in heaven no more devil no more temptations no more hard times reunited with friends and family for forever a glorified body no more sickness please all we have to do is confess these sins to him and he will set us free. This is the everlasting gospel, friends. Jesus calls us into obedience to his law, to worship him through love, through faith, for the hour of his judgment is upon us. Please, all we have to do is confess and accept Jesus as your Savior. Is that something you'd like to do? You can do that just by praying to him. It may feel a little awkward, but you can pray wherever you are, silently or out loud, and uh, if you're sincere, he will hear that and honor that. God bless you. I love you. Until Jesus comes, may you do the right thing. Amen.